Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Steve. Uh, frustrated. My blood sugars have been all over the place, and now my CGM says I'm really... Steve? Steve? You all right? But You know what? I got some glucagon right here. Okay, let me just open it up, and what the hell is that? Steve, I'm going to need to uh, figure out how to use this real quick. Here's the instruction manual. Let me see. Glucagon quick start guide. That sounds like what I want. What the Jesus? Um, step one, identify patient. Steve Edelman. Check. Um, number two, refer to diagram on page 48. That doesn't check out at all. Steve, hang tight, bud. I'll be right there. Mm. I don't really know. I just can't find it. Jeremy, that. what's taking so Steve, long? Steve, shut up. I'm trying to save you. But I, I think I got it. I think, okay, okay, okay. This is it. This is it. But, oh, it expired six years ago, Steve. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Uh, blood sugar's all over the place. Now my CGM says I'm low. <laughs> Well, you know what? I got you. I got options this time, Steve. You want intranasal glucagon or an auto injector? Uh, pick one. You got it, bud. I'm gonna save your life. Here, here you go. There you go. There you are. Wow, that sure went a lot better than last time. Sure did. Thanks, buddy. No problem, man. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks so much for saving my life. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I, feel, I feel great now. Twice. In, in, in the last year or so. Yeah, you know what? The the topic of today's Edelman Pettis report, Steve Edelman, Jeremy Pettis, is talk about the new formulations of glucagon, which are changing the way we treat severe hypoglycemia in such a better way. Yeah. So let's talk about a little bit of the background, which we tried to dramatically reenact in this, um, you know, really kind of Oscar winning performance, I oh, think for sure. for sure, is that, you know, we've had glucagon for decades and God bless it because it's really the, the kind of first line treatment for a severe hypoglycemic episode. But it comes, you know, historically in these, um, these kits that you have to, you know, take out the glucagon, which is in this powder. And then you have to take this liquid and inject it into it and then shake it up and pull it back out and inject it, which, isn't that bad, but if, you know, somebody's having a seizure, if it's your loved one, it's the first time that you're kind of looking at this, it's a problem. If you're someone with diabetes, you're used to needles and syringes, but you're on the ground having a seizure. And even doctors have been proven to have no clue how to give this thing. And the, the reason why they had to make the glucagon in a powder, because it's not stable mixed up yet. So the two new formulations, which we'll talk about, have, first of all, they have a much longer shelf life two years, but they come already in solution and they're mixed and you don't have to do any of that. Yeah. So to kind of bring this point further home, we asked our cameraman, Eric, to step out behind the camera for the first time ever and um, see if he can make heads or tails out of these instructions. Now, it's not like the quick start guide I have, <laughs> um, but uh, take a look. Okay. Okay, Eric, you're not a medical guy. That's correct. Let's just pretend your wife has diabetes. She's on the floor having a seizure. Your kids are running around screaming, daddy, daddy. Yeah, they do. Yeah, try to figure this out. Okay. I'm already having trouble opening it. Okay, okay. here we go. Okay, so there's a graphic in here with no words, mm -hmm. and I will put this up on the screen later, so okay. I'm seeing this too. It's, it's for multiple language people. It's okay. Like, it's Ikea. I think... <laughs> okay, I think that means maybe take the lid off this, maybe. Okay, she's really, this, she's really screaming. <laughs> this maybe... Put this in there, I think. Now, this is the most interesting part with the swirl. Yeah, it's a little swirl. I don't know if that means shake it or just literally turn it. I'm not it sure. Depends. Yeah, if there's a full moon, you do it three times. Right, well, yes. Once, once you put the solution in, people usually take the uh, bottle of our old MPH insulin and, and rub it like that. I'm sure you could figure it out. And then draw it into this, I think. Yeah, That's yeah. Be my don't best forget, guess. you got to take off the cap. First. That would be important, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, so, you know, maybe your wife survived. Maybe she didn't. We're not quite sure. But I think the point is, this is a low-stress 
situation. Thank you, Eric. Of course. Um, low stress situation, and it's complicated to figure this out. And imagine, you know, we were being a little bit silly, but imagine if this is a life and death situation, which it is. So God bless kind of our older glucagons yeah, yeah. Um, for being there, but now we have some better options. So do you want to talk about severe hyperglycemia more or jump right into the new glucagons? Well, or? let's let's show the two new glucagons and we can talk about our experience. Okay. Um, so basically the first one is called the GVOC Hypopen. It's like a EpiPen. Um, and basically what you do you pull off this red cap. You don't even see the needle. You push it down pretty much anywhere. And a little spring-loaded, it automatically injects the insulin. It shows you... Glucagon. I am still low. Sorry. You know, <laughs> after a severe reaction, you're kind of out of it for a while. Yeah. It gives the glucagon. Takes about five seconds. You and, and, you know, and that's important. So no mixing. Um which is huge. You don't see the needle. So again, people not familiar with that. It doesn't freak them out as much. Do you want to talk about the stability? How long this lasts for? Yep. Is this? Yep. Yep. This, you know, these last one year and literally I've never had a severe reaction where I went unconscious. I'll tell you about the other story in a second. Uh, and I probably have five or six of these over a 20 year period. And these, both of these, GVOC Hypopen and Vaccine Nasal Spray uh, have a shelf life of two years. And that's that's important too, because people get, you know, hopefully people aren't using this very frequently, but they get tired of always filling it and not using it and kind of running out. So adding an extra year to the shelf life is actually important. So this one pre-mixed, just inject it like an EpiPen. And then Vaccine, which is the intranasal glucagon, um, is just that. You kind of squeeze this, it goes right up the, up the nostril. And it's not like somebody has to, like, this isn't your typical nasal spray where someone has to plug their well, nose. We'll see and, you do it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and kind of inhale. Yeah. The point is that you can do this when somebody's having seizure or whatever. They don't have to be conscious, you know, that this, you're inhaling. This is it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Now we're going to check your blood sugar in 10 minutes and yeah. see where you are. I mean, it, you know, it says professional sample. Well, you didn't have to tell the... them that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just amazing what technology has done. And I want to make a couple of points that, you know, a lot of people feel that they wear a CGM, they're going to be protected. Well, you're not. And people still get severe hypo when they have a CGM on. And the other thing is, you know, they, they've never had one in their life and, they, and they, they're kind of lax of days because they say, it won't happen to me. But there's always a first time. Yeah. So a little more background on that. You know, anybody on insulin is at high risk for severe hypoglycemia, type 1s, type 2s. There's no A1C that protects you. There's no device that completely protects you. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. A lot of people think, I have a high A1C. And the doctor says, you have a high A1C. You're always high. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know, Steve and I actually had a publication looking at 30,000 type 1s in the country and actually found that as A1Cs went up, 7, 8, 9, 10, the risk of severe hypoglycemia went up also. Meaning those patients walking in with an A1C 10, 11, might be the most at risk when we usually would think, oh, their A1C is so high, they're never low. But it's those people that might, you know, not be taking insulin and all of a sudden take a big dose that can really crash. So there's there's no person type one or type two on insulin that you should look at and say, you don't need glucagon. Yeah. And the other thing I just want to say is that, you know, we we've, we've all had patients who have their first one and it's traumatic. Um, and people are super afraid to get uh, under good control because they think they're going to get low. And you know who sometimes have the most emotional trauma is the significant other. Mm -hmm. The person that got low and passed out, sometimes they don't even remember. Right. And I've seen that happen. It's like it scared the heck out of them. Yeah. And, and PTSD in a way, seriously. And that's why it's important that, you know, whenever you decide what glucagon you're going to use if you're a patient, that it's kind of a family decision. You know, this is not for me usually to be dosing. It's for you to be dosing if I'm unconscious. And are you more comfortable with, you know, a nasal spray or injecting or whatever it is? But the family members, the loved ones should know where the glucagon is, how to use it. That's a critical. And it's, but, and it's not expired. And so to the point that nobody is immune from, you know, severe hypoglycemia, both Steve and I have had episodes um, of a severe hypo where we've had to use glucagon. So I'll tell mine really quick. It was probably four or five years ago now. Um that I, I basically mixed up my basal and my bolus insulin. And it's a little bit complicated, but I was coming off of a pump and was trying to use a bigger dose of basal insulin because I was just coming off the pump and kind of wanted to do like a loading dose. That's the Jeremy protocol. Yeah. 
So I was going to take 50 units, 5-0 of my basal insulin, and instead took 50 units of my rapid acting insulin. And, you know, I, I went low, I ate a, ate a whole bowl of cereal, and then my CGM went off and I thought, oh, I'm high. But no, I was low again. And I said, that's weird. Finally figured out that what I had done, I'd take 50 units of rapid acting insulin. I ate a whole sleeve of Oreos. I ate half of the pizza. Sorry, I just spit on you. And then finally, I just couldn't eat anymore. And it was a real problem. You know, do I have to go to the emergency room? What am I going to do? And thankfully, I had at that time, this was all that was available, um, this glucagon kit, which I took. And it really is a life you know, saving situation. So obviously, this can happen to anybody. I'm an endocrinologist. I know a lot about diabetes. I have all the bells and whistles. And I've had to use glucagon. That happened a couple years ago for me. And Steve had an episode that just happened a couple nights ago. So tell us that story. Steve. Yeah, I'm going to make a long story short and, and a miserable night. But make a long story short, I my blood sugars were going up. I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was a bad pump change. I thought I drank regular lemonade, but I kept giving myself insulin through my pump. I gave six, six, eight, eight. And I, I thought insulin was bad, blah, blah, blah. And I next thing I know, I got two arrows going down when I'm below 100. And I'd already drinking three containers of apple juice. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take glucagon. And I took, I took it and it, it was so easy to give. And my blood sugars basically just did a U-turn. Yeah. And I went up to upper 100s and it, it, I felt like, you know, it was such a great way to prevent you from passing out, even though, you know, it was happening right in front of me. And both these formulations, the, 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 the time course of action is very similar, 15 minutes, but my blood sugar turned like you know, exit stage left, just, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I mean it was, it was a, uh, it was a good experience, and both of us gave it to ourselves, and uh, giving yourself glucagon is not normal, but there's a lot of situations when you just can't keep up, mm -hmm. and Jeremy couldn't keep up, and I already had drinking like three huge containers of apple juice, and I was a little concerned. Yeah. So yeah, I remember that going through my head. Do I have to go to the ER? You know, how am I going to do this? I remember you texted me. I was in Boston or something. But the other thing too is remember that with continuous glucose monitors, uh, we both wear the Dexcom. When you're 55 or 65 with TROs down, there's the thing called the lag time. You're probably 20 points lower. Yeah. Because it takes a while for, to go through the subcutaneous tissue, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think you know. Another advantage of, of these new products is it's got people talking about this, you know, how common, you know, severe hypoglycemia is. And now being reminded to tell patients we have options that, that you know, can hopefully, uh, it's not something you need every day, but you need to have this kind of emergency plan available. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No matter if you've never had one, whether you're on a CGM, whether your A1C is high. And I think the, the other thing that we should finish with is probably the most important. You need to ask your prescriber for a prescription. Uh, and you'll see on the screen the internet sites where you can get copay cards and discounts on your prescription. Because you and I have both been guilty of just running around trying to keep up with all the patients waiting to be seen. And we, we sometimes forget. Yeah. Uh, and so you have to ask your caregiver. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be missed. And remember, it's just, it's just a level of safety that you don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I think, you know, I've been putting it in my note template now just to remind myself for every single person on insulin to talk about it because it's so, so critical. And, you know, I will say another example is that we talk a lot about like, you know, looking at CGM downloads and your time hypoglycemia. And I saw a patient just last week who, you know, I was looking at her time and range was 85%, just killing it. Her time hypo was less than 1%, meaning like, you know, hardly any hypoglycemia. I walk into the room, oh, I'm so glad to see you. You're doing awesome. And she said, well, actually last week I had a severe low, I had to give myself glucagon. So just because you don't have a lot of hypoglycemia doesn't mean that you can't get, you know, one episode. That's kind of my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, what we're going to look forward to in the future is mini dose glucagon. Yeah. Think about it. You won't have to be <laughs> taking a bunch of food that doesn't really taste that good when you're sweaty and your heart's pounding and your blood sugar's dropping. Take a take a dial in your dose of glucagon and be able to pop back up without popping up too high. Yeah. I mean, so again, these are for severe like reactions. You're you're on the ground, like whatever. You need something to bring you back up. But Steve's saying mini dose very soon, hopefully, just take a little bit of glucagon if you have a mile low, you're exercising, these kinds of things. So glucagon, a lot of cool stuff going on in it. And um, it's all very helpful to people. Okay, everybody, make sure you stay nice and high. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye.
bud. Glad you're alive. Yeah. All right. Yeah.